the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. To, uh, reading from the book of Daniel. To the Lord, of, to Lord our God belong many, belong mercy and forgiveness, because we have rebelled against him and have not obeyed the voice, the voice of the Lord our God by following his laws, which he set before us. Let us confess our sins to God and our neighbors. Sue, could you lead us, please? Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. Sue, could you lead us in the Venite, please? Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker for he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Today's psalm is Psalm 126. <clears throat> when the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were, we, then, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has great, done great things for us and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering the sheaves. Glory to the Father. Yeah. And, to the God, so. and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Reading from the prophet Isaiah, thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise, they are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, so that my, they might declare my praise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Pistol reading today is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. <clears throat> If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a prosecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, I had these I have come to regard as a loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as a loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, 
in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I can attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already attained this or, or have already reached this goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it on my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal of the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sue, could you please read the song of uh, Zechariah? Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to John. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There he gave, there he gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard and anointed Jesus' feet and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. And he used to keep the common purse and steal whatever was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You'll always have a lot going on. So what will you do about me? The rejection of Jesus Christ 2000, more than 2000 years ago, is part of our creedal affirmation every time we gather on the Lord's Day. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. In our own lives, we process that line as, for our sake, he was crucified, not me. Jesus suffered death and was buried. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. And not so much the strife in this one. This is precisely why Paul addresses the church at, church at Philippi, which we read part of this morning. Paul wants to focus upon the cost of following Christ and yet the richness of it all. For Christ's sake, I have suffered the loss of all things in order that I may be found in him. He who loses his life for Christ's sake and the Gospels will save it. Always a hard saying, we tell ourselves. 
Yet Paul, like a teacher, a coach, that really good friend, Paul encourages us to understand the meaning by examining the intersection of our lives and faith. So often in our lives, we don't suffer the loss of things. We get lost in them and wrapped up in the self. So how could we ever be found in Christ? For Christ's sake, says Paul, suffer the loss of things. Stop having and start to discover the reality of being in Christ. Paul might be engaging in wordplay, but he's trying to get people serious about life's pursuit. He offers himself as an example. I willingly suffer loss that I may share Christ's suffering, becoming like him in his death. Paul is saying, if you can just begin to lean in this direction, God will not let you fall out of existence. Rather, you will begin to see you are not the only one who has suffered. Paul is saying, in Christ, receive the power to bear my pain and also to bear others who are afflicted. Becoming like Christ in his death means we do not have to hide from love. Love's agony, love's endeavor, love's expense. For Paul, such is the direction of the Christian journey, sharing in Christ's death that if possible, we may attain the goal, the resurrection from the dead. Resurrection of the body, mine. What kind of body will I have? forever? With such questions in our lives, we can even turn the hope of salvation into one more thing in which we get all wrapped up. And then we lament we cannot do what Paul suggests, let alone what Christ commands. But Paul says, don't do that. Stop looking back and press on ahead. And God, through Paul and through the prophet Isaiah, says, remember not the former things or consider the things of old or the ways in which you can get yourself in trouble. Behold, I am doing a new thing, says the Lord. Yes, for those who regard life as having, time is always running out. But for the God who calls his people into being, time does not elapse. God's time is an embrace. Even as we return to the dust, God is embracing us, doing a new thing, reforming us, reshaping us, loving us out of the dust we heap upon ourselves. Out of our nothingness, God creates new beings. To return to the God who creates from the dust. God creates us as new being. Whereas we humiliate ourselves for not being who we are meant to be, God instead humbles us, forgives us, creating in us a clean heart, calling us to a new creation rather than leaving us to our own dead end. Behold, I am doing a new thing. We might make a mess of our lives, but God makes a resurrection out of us in Christ. Amen. Thank you for the time. Let's take a moment to reflect on that homily. Sue, could you please lead us in the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise. That among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Pray for the sick and suffering, and I invite you to call out the names of anyone in particular you'd like us to pray for today. Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relieve your sick servants. We pray today especially for the people of Ukraine and for the people of Russia. We pray for Rose Connor, Frankie Cardamone, Carolyn Kerr, Ellen Potenza, Nancy Donnelly, David Welsh, Richard C. Almash, Ted Esser, Lucy Cardamone, Gail and Pat Cavanaugh, Charlie Strangaroni, Parker and Kathleen Moniz, William Skidmore, Lois Raboli, and Poet Laureate Gladys Henderson. Are there others? Uh, Bonnie Cassidy and Michael Kerr. Maureen Gorgula and Joanne DeRubio. Lord, we ask that you give your power of healing that minister to their needs, that they may be strengthened in their weakness and have confidence in your loving care for Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Pray for the departed. And I invite you to call out the names again of anyone particularly you'd like us to pray for. Oh God, who by the glorious resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, destroyed death and brought life and death and brought life and immortality to light. Grant that your servants, we pray especially today for Victoria's husband, Richard Almash, who died about 17 years ago. We also pray for our most senior All Souls member, Dr. Jack Feigl, who died on Wednesday. And we pray for Father Tom's father, Tom Sr., who passed away on Saturday. Are there others? Joseph Orlando. Being raised with him may know the strength of his presence and rejoice in his eternal glory, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. For our prayer for mission today under the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the um, Church of Nigeria. We pray for our mother church, St. James and St. James. We pray for our big sister church, Caroline and Setauket. We pray for the Church of the Nativity in Raleigh, North Carolina. And we pray for the ministers and the people and the community we serve here at All Souls. Sue, could you lead us in a prayer of mission, please? Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you, 
Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We can pray for a general thanksgiving. Uh, we give thanks for the ministry of Father Tom. We give thanks for our poetry ministry, our concert ministry, our Native American drumming ministry, and the other ways we try to serve God's community here in the three villages. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Sue, could you lead us in the prayer of St. Christendom, please? Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Look with compassion, O Lord, upon your people, that rightly observing this holy season, we may learn to know you more fully and to serve you with a more perfect will through Christ our Lord. Amen.